So now what I'm going to do in this, I'm going to try, I actually brought uh, some lamps that are a little bit too big. I brought some 1,000 thousand watt, show these lamps up here, Ray. I brought some 1,000 watt open face ARRI lamps. Um, and because of the fact that I don't have much distance, they may be too big. Uh, there's a couple of ways, let me walk over here, keep shooting. There's a couple of ways that I can um, try to um, help, uh, help with that. And uh, that would be using a, a spun, a tough spun. A tough spun is a material that you can use that, um, some tough spun in here. This is a tough spun. And what a tough spun is, it's a material, it's fire retardant. But it, 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 uh, it's less a diffuser and it's more a, um, it brings the level of a lamp down. So if I had 1,000 watts and I put this in front, it would soften up a little bit, but more importantly, it would bring the level of that lamp down. So I'm going to, I may end up putting a couple of pieces of tough spun on there. And then I'm also going to put a, a little bit of diffusion on there, on each fixture, because um, when I turn this on, if you just, just go wide, Ray, if you see, this, this hits, this hits the, the area really well, but by, putting it, by adding a little diffusion, it just softens all the edges on it. Um, so, in fact, let me shut off the house lights here because um, we don't need these anymore so that we have a nice clean surface to work with. So this is what we're going to start with. So I'm going to, what I, my, my simplest plan to, to try here is to put a light on each side um, and the light is, and it's actually going to be a dual purpose light because it's going to light the background, but a little bit's going to leak on my talent, which is fine. That's perfectly fine with me. I don't have a problem with that. Um, I just want to make sure that the shadows, as you can see, there's a shadow from this lamp, and it'll be softer once I diffuse it, but I just want to make sure that that shadow isn't on the screen, because if it's on the screen, of course, we've got two different greens to deal with, and that's going to be a problem. So, first thing I'm going to do is take a piece of, I'm going to just take a piece of spun. I think I'm going to just bring the, whole, the level down. I'm going to put the spun on there, and I'm going to put the diffusion on there, and a couple of uh, clips, and I'm going to clip it to the, the fixture here, either side of the barn doors. And I can always, I can always manipulate the, uh, the fixture later. In other words, I can, if, I, if it's too close, if I need to close the barn doors down, if it's spilling too much on her, um, I, can, um, I can move everything around. Now, I should say that in, in this type of situation, you know, there's times with green screen where you're trying to create a mood. And, and later I'm going to explain to you how uh, you, you light the background for what it is, but you light the person not, not necessarily for the room, but for the situation they're in. So, for instance, if you want to put water behind someone, um, you know, like saying that they're, you know, this illusion that they're not necessarily in the ocean, but they're talking about some kind of seascape, I'll show you a trick. I'll show you how you, you don't, you don't in other words, you just don't want to light someone flat uh, in front of a green screen. If, if it's a moonlit situation, um, then you might want to put, uh, you know, a, a moonlit background. It, me it means you might want to have a heavier, uh, light hitting their head as a kind of representing the moon hitting them and maybe a, a little more shadowy on one side. So uh, we'll show you a little later when you're lighting the talent that you're not just illuminating the talent. The, the, the key is to know what's going to go in the background and then um, light the person for what's going to be in the background electronically, not what, it, what the green screen. Because like I said, we don't care about this in relation to the talent. We only care that this is lit evenly. And then we care about the talent and how they're lit for the situation they're going to be in. Now, since I'm going to be putting them in front of a white background, in other words, that kind of Apple computer type of situation, I kind of want a glow. I want everything to be even and, and not too much, uh, you know, no shadow of any type. So that's why, it's one of the reasons why when I set these up, you'll see they may spill a little bit on the talent and actually help the talent and the background at the same time. But that's okay in this situation because I'm going to end up trying to illuminate the talent very evenly because if someone was standing in a white background, or you know, if the room was all white, all that white would just be hitting them and they, 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 there would be no shadow. Just as when, before when I had the, the, the wall, when I was standing next to the red wall, you know, you've got this big red wall and it's going to start to illuminate me in this kind of red glow. So that's what we're going for here, talent-wise. We're going to be we're electronically putting a white background. They're going to be in this kind of illusionary matrix kind of white uh, world. And as a result, I'm going to end up lighting the talent uh, flat, not, not shadowy, not, not modeled. But there are situations, as I said, which I'll show you, um, where I would like the talent differently based on what I'm going to put in the background. Okay. So now I'm working on the fixture that's going to be the other side of uh, the background, which is going to uh, illuminate uh, my background. Now just by eye, I don't know if you can see it on camera, just zoom out so you can see what, what I'm looking at here, Ray. 
with this, the whole screen in general, is as I, as I look at it from camera, I, I don't know if I kind of, it feels kind of even. Um, I don't know if it is quite. There's a couple ways that you can verify this. Okay, so now, now I've got uh, both fixtures on. Um, I've got some diffusion on both fixtures that's going to help me to, uh, to, to uh, spread the light out. So the beam, because you, usually there's no fixture that, where the beam comes out perfectly even. Um, so what I do is by using the diffusion, I am helping to uh, spread the beam a little more. As you can see, it's a little more even. And the green that I have here is very much the green that the, that the background is. It's not incredibly bright. Um, it's not a different shade of green as I'm going to simulate right now. I'm, I'm, I'm raising the levels uh, in post-production to, to simulate. I don't want this green. I don't want, which is like a washed out green. That's not what we're trying to create with a green screen. All we're trying to do is illuminate the green background so that it reads nice and evenly, you know, as the same color um, that it is. And that's what it does to me now. Uh, see, it didn't require a lot of light. I didn't, as I said, I used more light than I wanted to because I didn't, I forgot that I'm working in a small room, but I used some, some spun, some tough spun, which helps bring the intensity of those, those fixtures down. Um, so now what I want to do is I, I want to make sure that I've got a, a relatively even, as, as even, you know, as, as, as even a level across this entire piece of, of background as possible right now. That's, that's important because as you'll see later when we cut the key, if, if you've got one side that's really dark and the other side that's really bright and you, you tell the chroma keyer what color to pick, it's going to, all of a sudden one side of the screen is going to cut out, you're going to make adjustments, and the other side of the screen is going to cut out, but then, then the other side is going to start to fight. So you don't want, to, you don't want any battles with, with the electronic cutting, as they call it, cutting of the, ba the background. When I say cutting, meaning to, to, to insert the background into this. We don't, want, we don't want one side to be brighter and darker because what you're going to find in post-production is going to be hard to do. So there's a couple ways to, to make sure that you've got a good, a good illumination. The most professional way is to um, use a light meter. And so you can use a, just a simple Siconic. This is a uh, uh, Siconic light meter here. Uh, zoom in on that, Ray. Yeah. Okay. Ray is zooming on that. So this is just a conic, and it just measures a foot candles, and it's got a little, little red gauge you see on there, and, and less light shows up. So it's a really good way to, to measure light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick about, about chest high, and I'm going to walk across this, and I'm going to see uh, how I'm looking, and, and I'm getting 80 foot candles, but maybe just a little bit, a little bit more light on the left than the right. I'm, I'm going between about 75 and 85 foot candles. So I'm going to compensate. I'm going to, I'm going to adjust. It's, it's easier, of course, if you've got two people to, um, to do this part. I don't. I just have myself and Ray today, who's, but Ray's busy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to back, what, back that left side off, see, see what that does for me um, in terms of uh, background. So now uh, maybe, maybe, too, maybe too little. No, actually, it's pretty good across, across the back. I've got a pretty good range across there. We just want to check our lower end, too, and uh, see how that is. Because this is going to save you a lot of time in the end. Because when you get into the post-production end and you find out that, that your key is not evenly lit and you're suddenly having trouble cutting a clean background, you're going you're gonna to wish you had, had listened to me here. So as I look at this, um, I've got a, a relatively uh, clean background now. But one thing I did notice that I did create, uh, I moved that fixture back. And in doing so, I've started to now create a shadow, which I don't want. There's, I don't want any shadow. You say you're in a jam? Your car is on the fritz? You need a car today, but are a little bit short on cash? You're in luck, because Ready Credit's Tax Back Express will save the day. With Tax Back Express, your estimated tax refund is your down payment, so you can drive home today in a newer, nicer car. Just bring your latest pay stubs from all the jobs you held in 2006, along with your Social Security card, to any of the four Ready Credit locations. They estimate your tax refund in about 30 minutes. And while you wait, you can shop hundreds of new and used cars. Then use some or all of your estimated tax refund as down payment and drive your new car home today. And they even file your taxes for free. That means you'll have more money for Christmas presents or anything else you want. Visit Ready Credit Used Cars today at 1525 State Street in Springfield, 440 West Columbus Avenue in Springfield, 1 Palumba Drive in Enfield, and 933 Main Street in Holyoke. It's Tax Back Express at Ready Credit Used Cars.